Hello everyone. The first topic in module one is introduction to operating system. So here we will see what is operating system for the first. So we all know operating system is a software which is used to support like support the user to interact with the computer hardware. So operating system is a program which is intermediate between user and computer hardware. So operating system goals is like solving user problem with uh, like solving user problems making your computer components efficiently used and hardware efficiently used and like without knowing the inner functionalities of the hardware components and operating system or application pro programs will run on the operating system without knowing what is going on inside the system so components of a system or computer system structure is divided mainly divided into four categories one is like user the topmost one where the user is responsible to get all the means used for accessing the applications of the system so user will be the top one then bottom most will be computer hardware user want to access computer hardware through application programs to support application programs operating system will be helpful so user will access application programs and application programs need to be run on computer hardware which cannot be run directly so operating system is in between application program and computer hardware so operating system supports your application program means users program to execute and give back the output to the users this is how computer structure is classified next one is how you define an operating system basically there is no proper definition for operating system okay based on the task or the work of an operating system we can define operating system as resource allocator because what and all the hardware present in the system will be in hand of like will be holded handed over to operating system and operating system is responsible for executing the uh, sorry uh, allocating the resources to the user application so os is a resource allocator second one is os is a control programmer first thing operating system will allocate hardware resources efficiently to the users next one is controlling the user program os is also responsible for controlling the user programs by preventing errors or by solving them next one is how you start a computer we all know operating system has to be loaded once you start the system and then your application program run but who will initiate your operating system so when you switch on the computer there is a program called bootstrap program which is loaded when a power is turned on so bootstrap loader is a init function or initial function which will be loaded first so where it is saved it is saved in read only memory which is a permanent storage device and in the permanent storage device and your bootstrap program will be loaded once a power is switched on bootstrap loader will initialize the loading aspect and start copying your operating system code from the main memory sorry from the secondary memory to the main memory and then operating system will initiate the kernel and starts execution next one is computer system organization so computer system organization is very simple we have all the hardware devices which is directly interacted to the system and the memory device as a top method top level and memory at the bottom level so main memory all your functional aspects and the like processing aspects like cpu all the disk controllers like disk controller for secondary storage is magnetic disk usb controllers for your usb store like usb port connectable devices and graphical adapter for monitor so all these are the disk drives to connect your hardware devices and the processor in the middle level main memory which supports all this execution at the bottom level next one is com common functions of interrupt so in whenever there is a user signal given to the operating system or user gives a signal to execute 
that is sent the signal is sent as interrupt so since it is a signal moving signal we call it as interrupt vector whatever this signal or the interrupt generated by software application we call it as trap or expectation and if it is from the hardware devices we call it as interrupt so operating system starts executing the application based on the interrupt generated so we call operating system as interrupt driven function next one is timeline which shows the interrupt see here we have an example interrupt of cpu and input output devices here input output devices is in two states one is idle state one is transferring state and cpu is at user process execution i input output interrupt processing so when it is in idle state or when it is in transfer state and cpu when it is in user process execution or in the input output processing state so if at all input device gives a input output request based on the request transmission of data will be done once the transmission of data starts till the transfer done it will be under transferring state and user process execution will be or happening till the next interrupt generated based on that the interrupt timeline move so next one is input output structure this input output start on a control like input output of a system will be done based on two types one is control return to the user program only upon input output completion second method is after input output starts control returns to the user program without waiting for input output completion so in the first method cpu will wait like it will be waiting instruction ideal and cpu like if there is an input output generated then cpu will be waiting unless the next interrupt is given so cpu will wait for input output transmission in the next method which is not waiting so system call will be generated based on the system call request to the os it allows the user to wait for input output completion device status table will be generated before the system call a status table is maintained so that all the input output device which generates the in instructions will be stored in that table and then later on based on the system call your cpu will wait for the user program and input output completion next one is storage device hierarchy where we can see the storage devices from magnetic tape optical disk hard disk or solid state disk which are like permanent storage devices or the secondary storage devices which is interconnected to main memory with the help of main memory the data will be sent to the fastest memory of cache and the register based on the instructions in the register cpu will execute the application caching so as i told cache is a faster storage device which can store a limited number like limited instructions so it is used to store the instruction which has to be executed next and the instructions which are frequently executed so direct memory access is a method where if i input output device needs transmission of mem transmission of data then see here the mem method where you transmit data from the device is to the cpu input output request is sent once the input output request is sent data is transmitted by the instruction execution cycle like cpu will get the data from memory data is sent to data movement happens to cpu and to the device based on the interrupt generated but with the help of direct memory access we can access directly memory from them like directly data from the memory so device will generate input output request first request is generated and it goes through cpu after generating a request remaining data instead of generating each request for each byte other data will be transmitted based on direct memory access if at all there is any request or the interrupts to be done then the device will give interrupt to cpu or else direct memory access is responsible for copying data from the memory to the device directly this is about direct memory access hope understood the topic thank you